My name is Sebastian Weidt. I'm a senior scientist in the Iron Quantum Technology Group at the University of Sussex, and we work on developing a quantum computer. A quantum computer is basically a completely new type of computer which can solve certain problems that uh, even the most powerful classical computer would take millions of years to solve in minutes, we hope. The reason quantum computers are so quick is because of uh, quantum mechanics or quantum physics, which basically describes what happens on the very small scale. Certain things, for example individual atoms, can be in two places at the same time. And what a quantum computer does is it uses these quantum mechanical behaviours to make a very, very fast computer. To construct a large-scale quantum computer that can really run any quantum algorithm and really solve some of these really big uh, problems out there, we need millions of quantum bits. And uh, that is really the focus of uh, our group to construct such a large-scale device and all the technologies that we develop, uh, we make sure that they are really focused on solving the challenge of building this large-scale device. A large-scale quantum computer we currently envision will be the size of a football field. So these devices are really, really big, but if you consider how big data centers, for example, are, this is a perfectly reasonable size. We at Sussex, for example, are currently developing the prototype um, following our blueprint, uh, which we predict to be completed in two years' time. And the large-scale device we expect to take 10, 15 years. So this is what a typical uh, quantum computing lab looks like. You see large vacuum systems, for example, where we suck out all of the air uh, until you really have a better vacuum than in outer space inside these systems. Inside these systems is actually where we trap these individual ions and then encode information in them to process information. And over here we have our control unit. This control unit basically controls the quantum computer. Uh, this is where we type in any commands uh, and this is also uh, the unit which analyzes the data that we get uh, out of the quantum computer. There are many different ways of building a quantum computer. We focus on trapped ions because trapped ions are identical. So we encode qubits inside these trapped ions and when we have lots and lots of qubits, it helps that each of these qubits are identical. It also is a system which is very well isolated from the environment, which is really important for, for quantum computing. The reason we need to isolate our qubits from the environment is that as soon as a quantum system interacts with the environment, it basically destroys the information. So it's really important that uh, the carrier we use for our quantum information is as well isolated from the environment as possible. So here you can see one of these vacuum systems we use uh, as part of our quantum computer. We open them up in a, in a clean environment, um, then put in um, a microchip, a quantum microchip, which we use to, to trap our ions. Uh, then we close it up, we pump it down, and then it goes downstairs uh, into the lab uh, where we actually do the, the quantum information processing. I think initially, and, and I think this will, this will serve us quite well for quite some time, is that we will have big machines, so people will interact with that machine via the cloud which I think makes a lot of sense because you wouldn't want to use a quantum computer for some word processing task. There would be really challenging tasks that you'd, you'd like to have solved and um, submitting that to the, the quantum computer via the cloud and then getting the, the solution back makes a lot of sense at the moment. How that then develops beyond that, uh, we will have to see, um, but I think that that's already a, a pretty good way forward. We're only at the beginning in really understanding what um, potential quantum computers really have and especially understanding the applications of these machines and that really is very similar to how classical computers started where uh, these machines were thought of to only be useful for code breaking and people have made statements that there may only be a world market for five classical computers and look where we are now um, everyone has a small computer in, in their pocket and I think quantum computing is going through a similar phase right now where the more we engage with industry the more people get involved in uh, this technology, the more we understand that there are a huge range of possible applications out there and um, I think that it's really exciting to be part of that.